So here we have our setup for the bit axe that we are currently trying to find the best efficiency for. So yesterday we did two terahash testing out this heat sink that we have here. And today, as I said in the last video, we are going to be testing for the highest efficiency. And we're going to try to get it down to the efficiency of kind of the lowest bit main miner. I don't think we're going to get below it because currently the most efficient miner out there is 11 joules per terahash. These are kind of rated for around 15 joules per terahash, but they can go definitely lower. And that's what we're going to prove in this video, kind of. So you can see the setup that we have there. It's just the Nocta fan on this, I think it's called Copperzilla. We were calling it the Silent X, but apparently in the community it's called that. And then we have a fan here. It's just propped up by the keyboard. Otherwise it would swing out of place. So we still need to find a solution to keep that there to go under. If you can see under there, the voltage regulator temperature that you see under there, it's right by there. So that's what we currently got going on in terms of that. The overclocks have already been started, but in this video, we're just going to go over the results of what we have. We'll kind of give an intro into how we did it because we just used a Python script that we've used in a couple of videos. And yeah, let's get into the results of efficiency and do some comparisons on how good this is and how far we can actually push the efficiency currently on a bit angst gamma. But before we get into that, I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, Crypto Miner Bros. Since 2018, CryptoMinerBros.com has been the premier site for top tier crypto mining hardware, earning the trust of miners across the globe. The prices displayed on their site cover shipping and DDP straight to your doorstep, ensuring no unexpected costs at checkout. They deliver to over 100 countries and even provide lower invoicing options to help you cut down on customs fees. Payment is a breeze with options like direct bank transfer or cryptocurrencies including Bitcoin, USDT or Ethereum. With over 250 ASIC options, they stock some of the channel's favorites like the Bitax, the Bitax Touch and the Avalon Nano 3S. Join tens of thousands of happy customers who rely on CryptoMinerBros.com for dependable hardware fulfillment, clear pricing, and a top-notch service. Check out CryptoMinerBros.com today, link in the description. So as I said, we are looking at the efficiency today. So the main efficiency that we would kind of expect from one of these chips is whatever you see in an S21 because that's where they came from. So if we go down here, the original one has an efficiency of 17.5. I don't know, maybe this is an S21 plus chip that's actually in there because this is more the efficiency range that you normally get with a bit ax gamma. So something around this, you can see the nerd QX plus plus, that's around 16. We'll do a video on how to get that more efficient in the future as well. But because we have this new heatsink for the gamma, we're trying to test how efficient we can make it. We do have an ice cooler coming in the future as well. As I said, 3D printed parts is not where I want to go down because it just kind of complicates things with the axe mining. You want something that you can plug and play and these copper heatsinks seem to be really good for that with the spring pins that they have included in there. One thing I recommend as well is that the spring pins, I would use the original spring pins from your bit axe, the ones with the gold heatsink that you normally get, instead of the ones that come with the copperzilla, just because they're slightly bigger and you might end up snapping the board. So don't use those. Anyway, when we're looking down the efficiency range, this is just on ASIC minor value. You can see here all of the efficiencies or top efficiencies are in the hydro versions of the S21. And then below that is the immersion version. I know that just rhymed. And then the XP that you have here. Below that as well is the Bitax Touch, the Bitax Gamma and the Bitax Gamma Turbo. I don't know how they got the numbers for this, but clearly somebody updated it with the turbo numbers. But as you can see, the efficiency is listed at 14 joules per terahash, which I don't believe is that actually accurate too much, just because normally 
when people have the default settings, it runs at about 15 joules per terahash. So a lot of these numbers on here are probably not good to go off. Even there's stuff like the silicon lottery that might come into play as well. And I also think that the bitaxe touch doesn't do that much. You'd need to overclock it further and the watts would go up. So the efficiency is, I think, wrong on this website. At least for these smaller chipped ones. I don't know about the hydro ones. If we actually click here, we can see if it's listed anywhere down here. So let's just go on this one because this is a sponsor of the video. So hopefully they have it up here. Crypto Miner Bros lists it as an efficiency, what is it, 500 terahash to 5,500. And this lists it uh, the same. So 11 joules per terahash, basically. So that is a correct figure for this. And I'm assuming the rest of them kind of level out as well at different efficiencies here. So in the previous video, we did do the overclocking and the efficiency wasn't great, kind of granted. It was sitting at around this 18 joules per terahash range, which is technically still profitable in this range, but that was with the highest overclocks. So today we're going for the most efficient overclocks to see kind of, I know it doesn't really matter for solo mining, but how far you can actually push one of these chips. Bitmain obviously have it at 11 joules per terahash with the hydro version, but this is an open air version to get down to whatever efficiency would be in open air, you have to look down to the S21 XP and that gives you an efficiency of 13.5. So today my aim is to get anything under this. So anything under 13.5 and also not a terrible amount of hash rate, if that makes sense. So you could definitely get way lower efficiencies, but the hash rate would be maybe 500 giga hash. I want to see an efficiency of at least one terahash below this 13.5 joules per terahash range. One thing about ASIC mining as well is that these chips can definitely be overclocked to do better efficiencies on a lot of these miners that you see here and you can make adaptations to make them more efficient and also hash more if you wanted to. It's just that you kind of void the warranty on a massive miner like this. I don't even think Bitax technically has a warranty. You can kind of do whatever you want with them. Maybe some websites offer warranties against them if you don't make adaptations, but a lot of people are just doing whatever with the Bitax. So again, we are going to be using the Bitax hash rate benchmark. I think that there's a newer version that actually came out, but we're just running on the old version. I don't think it really matters too much. Same sort of thing. If you haven't seen the video, just type in on YouTube BitAx hash rate benchmarking and it should show up. And it's basically how to get the best overclocks or most efficient overclocks that you can for your BitAx. There is a bunch of other versions of this, not particularly this actual GitHub, but there is a bunch more, I wouldn't say clones because they all are kind of independent, but there's a lot of tools you can use out there that are different from just this one to benchmark your bit axe. So all you do is command line. So you want to do CMD and you want to run as an administrator. I don't think it matters if you do or not. And then we'll go with CD benchmark. If we click here, so that might not be in frame CD benchmark. And then secondly, you just input the Python bitax hash rate. So that's kind of the file that it's reading. And then the IP of the bitax. So we go back here. And then you can also set your own frequency. So we are going to be starting at, so you do dash F and then do a space. And we're going to start at 1000. And then we're going to go dash V. So that's the voltage that you're looking for. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong way around. I just realized. So frequency, we're going to be starting at 400 because I think that's the lowest you can actually go on the settings of the XOS. So that's safe to start there. And then for the voltage, we're going to go for 1000. 
and it's going to go up in increments of 20 for the voltage and 25 for the frequency. So once we hit enter there, that's going to apply those settings in terms of the frequency and voltage to the bit axe, and then it's going to do an increment for each of these. So starting off at 425, and then 450, and then 475, all the way up until it doesn't hit the expected hash rate, and then it's going to up the voltage and start again. So we're gonna have to let that run for a while. It takes 20 minutes to set each one. So if you wanted to leave it, it's probably gonna take quite a while to go from 400 up to kind of what we're looking for would be anything up to 725 in terms of the frequency. It's probably gonna take about four to five hours to benchmark that whole process. So let's click enter and we'll come back when we have all the results. So we're back with the results now. And as you can see, we have all of our results. So we cut it off short because I didn't think that the efficiency was gonna get any better from here, but we ended on a core voltage of 1,200 and a frequency of 775. And that kind of gave an average hash rate of 1.6, 1.7. But you can see it goes all the way back to what we have here at the start, which is what we started on, I think, I believe here. So frequency is 400 and core voltage is 1000. If you look down here, it actually didn't hit the expected. So what it did then was actually downgrade the frequency and then upped the core voltage to try find a stabilized place and then go from there. And then I think it just went upwards. So 1020, 400, and then 1,025, and then it moved to 140 and 400, and then it moved to 140, 425. Same thing all the way up until you come down to the last result. And this is why I was saying it takes a lot of hours to actually get there because it has to spin up and it has to test every single one. So I would kind of recommend if you're gonna use this to just leave it, do it in the morning, and then come back when it's fully kind of completed. They do have set limits on temperatures, so it won't let you go over a certain temperature, which will cut it off and then revert back to the best settings. So highest hash rate that we hit. So this is rank one that you see here. And we're not going on hash rate today, but that is the highest hash rate that we hit 1,500. So just to give you a figure of how much we got up to kind of on average, and the temperatures were still good. So we could definitely let it run, but I know that the efficiency is gonna drop off quite a lot as you go up from kind of these overclocks that you're seeing here. So 1,200 and 775, anything that's kind of past that, the efficiency does tend to drop off. But even at that point, our efficiency was still 13.78. So very, very good efficiency. We're nearly, even at that point with the highest hash rate, at this 13.5 efficiency. We are probably at the bit axe touch, but as I said, we're not really counting that. So anything below this bit deer seal miner, that is what we're kind of competing for. And we're more efficient than anything above that currently. So S21 Pro, S21 Plus Hydro, Watt Miner, Nerd QX++, but I think the efficiency is wrong for this. So we might need to, uh, do an efficiency test on that as well. So I haven't seen the final result, but if we go down here, we can see rank one. So top five most efficient settings that you see here. And our most efficient that we ever got was at 1,273 gigahash. So 1.2 terahash, which is great. And the core voltage was pretty much the default. So the default settings are probably the best for efficiency is what we found. It's slightly underclocked on the core voltage. So the default is 1150 and this core voltage is 1100. Frequency, I believe that is the default. Let's just check here, settings and then, okay, that's not the default. Five, 525 is the default, but 575 is kind of in between the highest you can go without kind of inspecting element and the default number. So that's actually not what I expected in terms of the hash rate. I thought the efficiency was gonna be way, way 
lower or way better efficiency at a lower hash rate. When we go down, I don't think there's anything that's below one terahash here on the efficiency scale. Even our fifth highest efficiency was 12.32, but we have yet to hit that efficiency that we see here. So currently we are more efficient than everything else apart from the S21 XP Plus Hydro, which is 11 joules per terahash. So if anyone's ever had an efficiency of that, please let me know in the comments and what overclocks you achieved with that. I think we could actually dial in this overclock so we could work between these ranges going up in one mega volt and then one megahertz to actually find the utmost efficiency. But that would take quite a while to actually dial that in because it would be going up one every cycle, which is every 20 minutes. We could work in this range, so we could pick the most efficient that we see here and then anything that's kind of close to that down here that is not far out from here, which I don't really see anything. This is probably the closest that we have, or maybe this one's the closest in terms of the megavolts and the frequency. But 11.73 is still great efficiency. I am going to try and do this, but I'm going to do it in five volt and megahertz increments and then we'll come back when that's kind of fully tested and see if we can get anything better than what this efficiency is. So I'm probably going to start it at 1, 190 and then 550 and let it run from there. We'll go up in 5 volt increments or 5 megahertz increments as well just because one increment is way too long to actually let it run. But we'll come back when we have the results for that and see if we can get a efficiency of under 11. So under the efficiency of the most efficient miner that you see here. So after doing that kind of last test where we checked between those values, we started off, I think if we go up here, you can see it started off at 1050 and then 525. And then it went up in increments of five and 10. So it dropped down for this one, then started building it back up as you go up here. And that led us down to the top performers. Obviously, we don't really want to look at that. It's more about the efficiency to see if we could get it under that. We ended up at 11.76, which is basically 11.77, which is still kind of the lowest. That's exactly the same, nearly exactly the same result as we saw previously before we did the test with the same overclocks, even though these ones are a little bit different. But we kind of dialed in the range a little bit because we have 11.8 here and then 11.9 and then just over 12 and then 12.19. So I'm kind of dialing it in a little bit. I think you need to let it run pretty much every increment to find the most efficient one. I don't think we're ever going to get under 11 on this, but if anyone has got steadily under 11 in terms of efficiency, please let me know the overclocks that you used. And if there's any other weird overclocks that we didn't kind of discover in this that you guys have tried and has a very low efficiency, please let me know as well. Make sure you like this video and subscribe for more content like this.